It's Wednesday, February 7. In the headlines, ECJ to assume role of political ombudsman. In business news, Edufocal and Supreme Ventures Group signs a multi-year agreement. Regionally, Guyana's government launches projects with CDB to boost food security. And in sports, Jamaica Scorpions vs. Windward Islands Volcanoes at Sabina Park. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Abs. Office of the Political Ombudsman is set to be subsumed into the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, ECJ. This after members of the House of Representatives passed the Political Ombudsman Amendment Act 2024 in the lower house on Tuesday. The Act and its attending matters were passed despite objections by some members of the House. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck, in piloting the bill, argued that the ECJ has long established internal protocols for treating with matters that will be adopted and applied. The operation of the Office of the Political Ombudsman is intended to provide oversight of the conduct of the political parties, its members and supporters by promoting good governance and ensuring that political actors adhere to prescribed code and ethical standards. Similarly, Mr. Speaker, the ECJ is expected to safeguard the democratic foundations of the country by enabling eligible electors to elect their representatives to govern Jamaica through free and fair elections. As there is overlap, Mr. Speaker, in the functions exercised by both commissions of parliament, and as the chairman of the ECJ has expressed support of the proposal of these functions of the Office of the Political Ombudsman to be subsumed under the ECJ, it is clear that the character of the ECJ shall remain. He also argues that investing responsibilities of the Political Ombudsman to the nine-member commission will result in more impactful recommendations. It is in the nation's interest, Mr. Speaker, to extend the reach of the well-functioning ECJ to close any gaps that may exist in the oversight of the political process and political conduct. Opposition leader Mark Golding described the decision as a bad idea. There are no regulations to govern their procedures. I don't think it will be in place in, an, in, a, in a practical sense during the current campaign, which needs an adjudicatory body that can act quickly to address concerns that are, raising, that are occurring daily, it seems. So, to my mind, this is a very unfortunate way that the government has elected to proceed. We the bill will now go to the Senate on Friday, where the government will again use its majority to ensure it passes the upper house. It will then go to the Governor-General for his assent, after which it will become law. The harbour view to Yalas Bridge section of the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project was officially opened on Tuesday. Prime Minister Andrew Holness was on hand for the ceremony and he responded to calls for a delay of the event. Mayor of Morant Bay Hubert Williams did not attend the official opening of the new roadway after publicly advising the government to delay the event until certain infrastructural amenities are put in place. While delivering his keynote speech at the event, Prime Minister Andrew Holness addressed the matter. There are those who are wedded to a diet of negative, and we must accentuate the positive. We must give people hope and lift their expectations. He told attendees that this leg of the highway is a part of St. Thomas's journey of development since emancipation. The road to development begins with a road. The road to development begins with a road. So, there are those who would want to underplay the significance of this. But I'm sure that the people in this side of the island realizes the importance of this road. The forgotten parish is now front and center in the administration of the government. 
The new leg of the highway has been under construction for the last three years. Deputy Manager of America Division at the China Harbor Engineering Company, Zhang Wanzhong, provided a few facts about the new development. The opening of the Southern Coast Highway Improvement Project, Part B2. This roadway, spanning 17 kilometers from Harborview to Yalas and boosting four lanes, has been designed and constructed by Czech to world-class specification and renowned artwork quality. The people of St. Thomas and the wider Jamaica can now travel in comfort and easy along these corridors and welcome an increase in economic development. Reporting for the news on PBCJ, I'm Danita Rodney. More than a thousand Jamaicans have been treated under the Jamaica Cuba Eye Care program since its reopening last September. While on a tour of the St. Joseph's Hospital facility in Kingston on Tuesday, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton disclosed that some 5,847 Jamaicans have been assessed for treatment. Of that number, 2,562 have been prepped for surgery, while 1,226 have been screened for their condition. Minister Tufton says he's happy with the progress being made under the program. Cuban ambassador to Jamaica, His Excellency Fermin Gabriel Quiones, who was also on the visit, noted that it is important for these and other related initiatives to regain traction after the disruptions caused by COVID-19. Have you ever wondered if refrigerators or air conditioners are tested for quality and energy efficiency? Consumers are often encouraged to purchase products tagged as energy efficient, but who ensures that you are getting value for your money? The Bureau of Standards and the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority, NCRA's Energy Efficiency Testing and Labeling Program, requires importers, distributors, and retailers of refrigerators and freezers to submit their products for testing. Nigel Davis is the Senior Technical Officer in Electrical and Electronic Branch at the BSJ. The Bureau of Standards and the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority, NCRA's Energy Efficiency Testing and Labeling Program, requires importers, distributors and retailers of refrigerators, freezers and air conditioning units to submit their products for testing. Nigel Davis is the Senior Technical Officer in Electrical and Electronic Branch at the BSJ, where the testing labs are located. This lab was launched in October 14, 2017. So the old, that's the labeling program aspect of it was launched at that time. Then we would have be testing like air conditioners, refrigerators, all of those room air conditioners and refrigerators, and we test wine chillers in an extent. So that's the scope that we test that. Why is it important to test these products? Oh, they are in the market. There are a lot of inefficient products on the market as we speak. So what we try to do with this program is to ensure that what consumer is getting out there is something that is efficient so that the overall intent is to reduce the energy bill of our nation. So air conditioners is the biggest energy user in the home, followed by the refrigerators. So we approach it in a sense to, under the government, we try to bring down the energy. So this is an area that we focus on and it's not just local, but it's a regional approach. How do you measure energy efficiency with these products? Well, there's a standard that we use for air conditioner that is the CRS 59. That's a regional standard. And for refrigerators, it's CRS 57. So these are under the cross queue in the Caribbean. So what we try to focus on is that we ensure that we have a graded, a letter graded system that we use. So you can go from A to F to determine how efficient a product is. So you will be seen out there while you go into the courts, the single hall, those stores, the price smarts, just to name a few of our persons that are on team, you will be seeing those labels and those labels will be representing how efficient a product is for its type. We will continue this three-part feature in subsequent newscasts.
The Kiwanis Clubs in Jamaica have launched the Positive Attitudes, Courtesies and Ethics Initiative, PACE. Over 300 early childhood institutions and primary schools across the island will benefit from the program over the next 6 to 18 months. Nanita Rodney tells us more. The PACE initiative aims to encourage positive values, attitudes, courtesies, and a strong sense of pride among children and youth. Addressing Tuesday's launch, held at Our Lady of the Angels Preparatory School in Kingston, Minister of Education and Youth, Favor Williams, says the initiative captures much of what the ministry is aiming to do through the Character Education and Civics in Schools program. PACE will be implemented through a toolkit of fun-filled and exciting activities developed by Kiwanis. The learning and educational tools and activities will be used by parents, teachers, and in the Kiwanis builders and K-clubs in schools to create a better appreciation of the importance of values and attitudes and the desire to embrace them among children. Reporting for the news on PBCJ, I'm Danita Rodney. Time now for the Business Report with Denise Williams. Good day everyone and thank you for joining us on the Business Report. I'm Denise Williams, your guide to the latest happenings in the world of business. Digital Learning Solutions Provider, Edufocal CEO Gordon Swaby announced that Edufocal and the Supreme Ventures Group, SVL, have signed a multi-year contract to operationalize the gaming company's virtual learning environment and content for its territories in Jamaica and Guyana. The partnership sees Edufocal providing its proprietary corporate learning platform and the creation of corporate learning content to SVL. It is expected to mark a significant leap towards unlocking the full potential of the company's human capital. Regina Taylor, General Manager of Edufocal Business, said the collaboration will redefine professional development within SVL. The virtual learning environment by Edufocal Business is strategically aligned with the SVL Group's commitment to developing its human capital. Edufocal Business aims to contribute significantly to the organization's vision of cultivating a workforce that is both adaptable and resilient. The Jamaica Stock Exchange has received the Rotary Club of Kingston East and Port Royal Vocational Awards 2024 in the company category. The award recognizes the JSC's commitment to social development across Jamaica, including its work through the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange aimed at driving social changes on the island. JSC Managing Director Marlene Street Forest was excited and proud to receive the award on behalf of the local equities regulator. She said, it is a testament to our commitment to ensure that the social fabric of Jamaica is developed along with the development of the financial sector. If one happens without the other, there is going to be a disconnect, and this would continue to stymie the growth of Jamaica. This will not allow the country to reach its full potential. In return, the board and members of the Rotary Club of Kingston East and Port Royal congratulated and paid tribute to the JSC as a vocational award recipient. In its citation, the Rotary Club also stated, the Jamaica Stock Exchange has been an invaluable ally to the Rotary Club of Kingston East and Port Royal for over 14 years, demonstrating an unwavering commitment to the community service and the principles of Rotary. Through its support, the JSC aligns with Rotary's objectives, conducting its business and community activities in accordance with the four-way test principles. QWI Investments Limited for the first quarter ended December 31, 2023, reported a 15% increase in dividend and interest income totaling $14.85 million compared to the $12.94 million in the corresponding three months last year. QWI's business model primarily involves the holding of tradable securities in the local and overseas markets. 
the company holds stocks listed on the Jamaican and U.S. markets, with Jamaica commanding the majority of the portfolio, in addition to a small number of stocks that are listed on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange. Net profit for the three months ended December 31, 2023, amounted to $17.99 million, up from the net loss of $64.92 million reported in 2022. During trading on February 6, 2024, the top advancing stocks covered the advertising, insurance and finance sectors on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. The Limners and Bards Limited shares advanced by 17.46% for a 22 cent increase to close at $1.48 with 24,717 shares traded. Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited shares advanced by 16.75% for a $0.35 cents growth in price to close at $2.44 with 750 shares traded. Epley Limited shares advanced by 15.45% to trade upward by $5.10 to close at $38.10 with 293 shares traded. On the declining stocks that traders experienced on February 6, 2024, the top three losers covered the food and finance sectors. Caribbean Cream Limited declined by 10% for a 39 cents drop in price to close at $3.51 with 1,158 shares traded. ISP Finance Services Limited declined by 7.44% for a $2.34 price slide to close at $29.10 with 27 shares traded. Consolidated Bakeries Jamaica Limited declined by 5.41% for a price decline of 12 cents to close at $2.10 with 9,449 shares traded. Over on the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago for February 6, 2024, trading activity on the first tier market registered a volume of 99,000 shares crossing the floor of the exchange valued at 1.2 million TT dollars. Massey Holdings Limited was the volume leader with 30,000 shares trading hands for a value of $129,098.98 Trinidad dollars followed by NCB Financial Group Limited with a volume of 15,600 shares being traded at 45,240 Trinidad dollars. Moving from the money moves of investors, executives, and companies, we turn to the Forex market. On February 6, 2024, the Bank of Jamaica reported that US 47.4 million was bought from Forex traders, while US 24.5 million was sold to Forex traders. Buying directly from the Bank of Jamaica, Foreign currency traders sold the US dollar for $156.91 and bought the US dollars for $156.21. The difference between the buy and sell rate was 70 cents, which represents a profit for Forex traders for every US dollar trading. Canadian Forex traders earned a trading profit of $6.29 from transactions with the Bank of Jamaica. The Canadian dollar was sold at $117.77 and bought for $111.48. For traders looking at the British pound, they pocketed a profit of 26 cents, selling it for $198.58 and buying it for $198.32. For our credit report tip of the day, with a high credit score, you become eligible for lower interest rates on loans. This not only saves you money, but also allows you to borrow more without breaking the bank. Your credit report is your ticket to cost-effective financing. And with that, we wrap up today's business report. I'm Denise Williams. Appreciate your company. Stay well informed. Stay ahead of the curve. Until our next update, take care. In regional news, Inter-Caribbean Airways will be operating non-stop flights between Barbados and Jamaica. The airline's inaugural flight out of Bridgetown landed at the Norman Mann International Airport on Tuesday, February 6 at the main terminal. There's more in this report. <laughs>
this Southern Caribbean hub for Inter-Caribbean will see flights from Kingston on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, with return flights on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. CEO of Inter-Caribbean Airways, Lyndon Gardiner, says this is a historic move as the route connects two vibrant cultures in the Caribbean. I'm thrilled to be here in Kingston as we open up this new gateway between two of the Caribbean's most vibrant cultures. This direct route significantly enhances connectivity between our islands and brings our people closer together. Mr. Gardiner says Inter-Caribbean Airways' goal is to expand and enhance regional travel. It would not have been possible without the tremendous support of our partners. The Jamaica Tourism Board, Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., the JCA and Barbados Avi Aircraft and Aviation Services, and the various government ministries and arms on both sides um, of the Caribbean. Thank you for sharing our, in our vision of deeper Caribbean integration. Representing the Minister of Tourism, Regional Director at the Jamaica Tourist Board, Mrs. Odette Sobram Dyer, praised the new connection between the two countries. As we soar through the skies between Jamaica and Barbados, let us reflect on the shared history, the common values, and the dreams that bind us together. This slide is a testament to the power of connectivity and the belief that through collaboration, we can achieve greater heights. Barbados is monitoring the progress of the cooperation agreement with Cuba that arose from bilateral talks between the two countries during the 2022 CARICOM Cuba Summit. Ambassador to CARICOM David Comisong, who is also chair of the Barbados Task Force, says 10 different areas of cooperation are being focused on. Coming out of the last summit, we established this um, joint Barbados Cuba um, uh, cooperation agreement. So, <laughs> Um, education, um, tourism, uh, health, sports, uh, agriculture, um, biotechnology. I mean, some, some of the areas that I find very exciting, they have pioneered um, some cutting edge um, medications um, in, in, the, in the health sphere. We are very, very interested in the heparoprot P. Um, this um, drug, this is a drug that is used to treat diabetic ulcer. Diabetic ulcer is what typically leads to many Barbadians uh, suffering amputations of their, of their limbs. And uh, right now with the Ministry of Health, we are working on bringing Hebroprot P to Barbados, have it registered in Barbados so it become, it, it's available um, for Barbadians suffering from, from diabetic ulcer. Guyana's Ministry of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Caribbean Development Bank, on Tuesday launched two projects to propel the country's food security agenda, as well as boost market access and export. The projects were launched at a combined cost of approximately 143 million Guyana dollars through funding from the CDB and European Union's CARIFORUM EU Economic Partnership Agreement and CSME Standby Facility. The first project, aims to strengthen surveillance programs to protect against bovine tuberculosis and brucellosis to protect the growing livestock industry. These are milk-borne infectious diseases that affect cattle. The project is expected to increase productivity in beef and cattle production. This initiative will also catapult the dairy industry, advancing ventures such as the government's dairy project, which benefits hundreds of single parents. This here that we are doing to safeguard the livestock industry. We are in the process of building a state-of-the-art abattoir in Region 5, where we now are now looking to develop the cattle industry, both in beef and dairy. Meanwhile, the second project sees the development of a food traceability system for pineapples and leafy greens in Guyana. This design ensures transparency in the journey from farm to table. It supports supply chain transparency and disease outbreak response. The traceability system in, the agricult in agriculture and, food, and the food sector is particularly important. And an, effective one, an effective one can promptly identify, single out and remove unsafe food products from the market. And we are having a, a lot of that 
in our marketing guy and I'm hoping that these things can be eradicated and remove it. In 2023, the livestock industry grew by 12.7%. Antigua and Barbuda's Minister of Health, Sir Molubin Joseph, says the country has 10 confirmed cases of dengue fever and four active cases of COVID-19. He made the disclosure during a press conference on Tuesday. We hear more from Theresa Goodwin. The Caribbean experienced a surge in confirmed and suspected cases of dengue fever in the latter part of last year. It has prompted health authorities in Antigua and Barbuda and other parts of the region to intensify surveillance efforts. Health Minister the Honorable Sir Malwin Joseph confirms that the ministry continues to work cohesively with the Caribbean Public Health Agency CARFA regarding testing and diagnosis. He also pledges the commitment of the ministry to redouble its efforts to destroy the breeding sites of the Aedes aegypti mosquito, the vector for dengue fever. To express my appreciation to CAFA for their continued support to Antigua and Barbuda and also to the rest of the Caribbean, uh, because it's not only dengue that we um, test for, uh, we also ch test for chikungunya, uh, influenza A and B and leptospirosis. As it relates to COVID-19, the minister notes that while the cases are spiking in other parts of the region, the numbers remain low in the Twin Island state. COVID-19 spread can occur similarly to flu, as seen in the flu season, uh, at, at least which is current at this time. Uh, persons are advised towards good health practices, such as hand washing and use of hand sanitizers, good cough etiquette, sanitizing services around your homes and workplaces, having a balanced diet. Vaccination against the diseases are currently unavailable in this country. However, the ministry is actively working to secure a donation of the Sinovac vaccine for interested individuals. Minister Joseph also provided an update on other infectious diseases affecting the region, including leprosy and measles. He says there are no cases of leprosy in Antigua and Barbuda. However, the ministry will be focusing on public education to raise awareness about these health concerns. Education in disseminating um, information on leprosy and awareness is important. And so we'll use this uh, medium to do so as well and to get the Ministry of Health, uh, public relations, and uh, to uh, get information out so that there can uh, be vigilance in um, surveillance for uh, leprosy. Leprosy is a chronic infectious disease caused by the type of bacteria Mycobacterium lepra. The disease predominantly affects the skin and peripheral nerves. Theresa Goodwin, ABS News. In sports, we're on the pitch with cricket. Jamaica Scorpions opened their regional four-day cricket season with a match against Windward Islands Volcanoes at Sabina Park in Kingston today. It's their first four-day game on home soil in four years. Due to multiple reasons such as infrastructural challenges and the COVID-19 pandemic, Jamaica Last played a home match in early 2020. That game was at Trelawney Stadium outside Falmouth in northwestern Jamaica. Now, Jamaica has not won the regional first-class title since 2011-2012 campaign. However, Scorpions head coach Andrew Richardson is optimistic that home advantage and solid preparation are enough to get his team off on the right foot. And that's it for the news on PBCJ. Thank you so much for watching.